next thing we've got to do is to tap on the inside and the lying part our bodice to the skirt. Now it says on the instructions to only do it from the waist backwards. So on the inside of your lining you attach it to the waistband of the skirt without going through to the outside. But upon looking at the photos, it lies flatter and better if you actually sew it all down to the skirt. So at the moment we've just put some pins in where mum's marked it on me. And as I say, from the inside she's going to be tacking that, so we'll show you how to do that in a moment. Okay, to attach this to the front and still make it look as though it's a separate item, I'm going to just pull that back slightly and then take a stitch from the inside of the bodice and then I'm going to take a stitch through the skirt so that when that's pulled together it will hold it all down but also look as though it's coming away at the same time. So take a bit from the bodice where you can't see and a bit from the skirt and that's how it will go all the way around where I want it sewing down. I'm not going to put this on YouTube because it's not finished. So I can just film it then. This is showing the top of the train. And I've now put on a couple of hooks and eyes on both sides. So that when it's closed, it will look like that. Okay, for the top band, what I'm going to do is take the same material as the dress and make two bow tie shapes for the ribbon. Each one of these is 10 inches long by about three and a half inches wide, slightly narrower at the top and then I've turned the whole thing in half, one slightly higher than the other and this is going to be attached to the base of the band and the band has got uh, four hooks and eyes attached and the hooks are on right on the bottom of the bodice and the eyes are on the bottom of the band so that when they go together it's slightly higher than the waistband. To create and to create the uh, floral display, we're using um, medium-sized pink roses, and I should be using three of those. And each rose has got a rosette of lace around each one. So I've cut a circle of lace, scalloped it on the edges, then I've attached that to the base of the rose. And then I've connected up the three roses using the wire that comes with them, like so. And then this will be attached to the band and sewn on. And that is roughly what it's going to look like. Okay, we're now going to connect the second tray to the bottom tray. We've already put a running stitch along the bottom of the second train ready and now we're going to put a running stitch across the top of the bottom train as you see this is right at the bottom where the frill is. So once we've put a running stitch in we're going to do exactly the same as we did before connecting both pieces onto a band and they will both fit into that section of material. Okay, just to quickly explain why we put some stuffing in the bustles, it's just to give it that extra poof. 
but if you put too much stuffing in it becomes really big and round like a balloon which looks a bit silly which you don't want so just put enough in there to make it look sensible size and proportion with your dress this is what would happen if you didn't put any stuffing in it you see it just lies rather limp and flat and floppy and there's no real shape to it if you compare the top with the bottom so you just put a bit of stuffing in it and seal the back as before and it gives you um, an extra nice proof on the back of your bustle train ok to make the uh, garlands I'm going to show you how to do the bottom garland and it has two dark pink roses on the outside slightly lighter, lighter pink ones a little bit further in and then the three main ones uh, unfortunately we couldn't get all our flowers the same but it's close enough and you'll need some florist tape and a good pair of pliers going to see where we're going to how big the garland's got to be and if you just hold up your roses they're going to be at the end we want them just to peek out from both sides of the bustle so I've just marked my stems with a length and now I'm going to wrap them in forest tape okay so we begin winding around the stems take your florist tape and then come back on itself then hold it taut as you go down and slowly wrap the stems make sure that you overlap the florist tape as you go bit of tension on the tape. I'm just going to pass the end of the cutoffs then. Let it stop coming back on itself. bit of tension on as you go and then just snap it up there we go that's the first section done got some um, spare sprigs of leaves that I'm just going to put around the end rows just so we've got a little bit of extra greenery there get the florist tape and tape those on on that and snap it off there we go that's the one done and I shall do the same with the rows at the other end ok now we're going to take the next rows and put that against the garland approximately that far from the first rows and then we're going to get our florist tape and wind that on
let's take our first big rose and cut quite a lot of this stem off because I just want it fitting into that space. Okay, then we'll take our end rose, which is going to be approximately there, and I'm just going to tape that onto the stem. Then I put the stem down on my second rose, and that is going to be taped just about there. I'm going to put our last rose on, which is going to be in the middle of the two, and just slightly lower. That's where it will finish. and we'll just go and take that over to the dress now um, and once it's bent into shape it will sit up at the top there underneath the bustle and the end roses will be slightly turned out and then what I shall do is attach some ribbon to each side uh, two pieces of ribbon to each side of the roses and they will be attached to the rings to hold this into place. Okay. And then also we have the flared ribbon at the bottom. Yeah. Right, before putting actually attaching a garland, on the photo just here and here, or if you have this picture on your computer at home, you might be able to zoom in better. There's some beautiful pieces of lace, which we've also put at the top of ours. Um, so it just peeks out there. We've also got to do this beautiful ribbon at the bottom of the dress there. Find yourself a nice piece of lace to your liking and just tie it round the garland. Tight knot like so. And when you hold it up it just flares out along the bottom there. Tip it up so it's the same length. Mm -hmm. There we go. That's the one done. Then we'll do on the other side, and it should look like this. So nice piece of lace peeking out from each side. Okay. 